Hi, I'm Emily Waltz, and today I'm going to be sharing with you a Victorian era horror story from Pembroke, New Hampshire's dark past. It's the tragic story of Josie Langmaid. It was a crisp fall morning in early October when Josie left her family farm at 8.30 and began her walk to school. She usually would walk with her brother Waldo, but on that morning decided to stay behind and wait on a friend. When she realized her friend was not at the normal meeting spot, she continued the two-and-a-half-mile journey alone. She passed six farms on her way to Pembroke Academy. Josie was seen by a farmer who noticed she must be running late as the bell was tolling. The last place she was seen was on Academy Road. The family did not realize anything was amiss until 3.30 that afternoon when Waldo returned home from school. Over a hundred men began to comb the area near Pembroke School. They found an apple and Josie's school book laying by the roadside. The search abruptly ended at nine o'clock, twelve hours after Josie had went missing. One of the villagers had made a gruesome discovery. It was at this site that the search party's lamplights would reveal a headless corpse. Josie's father and the townsfolk loaded the body onto the back of a cart and began the torchlight procession to the Langmaid homestead. The family was overwhelmed with grief, and without knowing what else to do, they laid the body in her bedroom that night. The search continued early the next morning. One half mile from the murder site, they discovered Josie's blue oilcloth cloak. Within it was wrapped her head. Near the site, they found a large red oak club that was broken in two. Her hat, a comb, and a hair switch. The main murder weapon was determined to be a small, sharp knife. During the funeral, the only sign that there had been a struggle was the large, dark boot print bruised into her cheek. The boot print would prove to be a key piece of evidence. Josie's brother Waldo struggled with the tragedy. He would pass two months later from typhoid fever. Word quickly spread about the murder. Law enforcement from Boston even made their way to Suncook Village. 
A telegraph was sent to the nearby town of Concord, New Hampshire, asking for help. It was soon brought to the authorities' attention that there were many similarities between Josie's murder and the murder of Marietta Ball, a young school teacher from St. Albans, Vermont. Police involved in the Ball case would even receive useful leads from a psychic known as Sleepy Lucy. Joseph Lepage was a main suspect at the time, but was unable to be convicted. It was discovered that he was now living in Suncook Village, which is a part of Pembroke, and working as a woodcutter. He was soon arrested and taken to trial. Lepage's sister-in-law had traveled from Quebec to testify against him. Years before, she too had been a victim of his sexual deviancy and narrowly managed to escape with her life. The most damning evidence was that his boot heel matched the bruise on Josie's cheek down to the curve of the heel and the spacing of the nails. Before the execution, Joseph Lepage admitted to the murders of Marietta Ball and Josie Langmaid. He disclosed where he had hidden Josie's wallet and ring. These were details that only the killer could know. According to his own confession, he had waited by the roadside until Josie approached he used the oak club to stun her and drag her body into the woods. He would break the club later in an attempt to hide it. Josie had been dead 12 to 15 minutes when he turned her head to the side, placing his boot heel on her cheek in order to remove her head. It was also discovered that the initial target that morning was Josie's friend, Leela Fowler. Leela, thinking she had missed her friend, accepted a wagon ride to school that morning. This would turn Lepage's gaze upon Josie. The rural town of Pembroke had never known such a tragedy. Josie's death took place 13 years before the Whitechapel Jack the Ripper murders in London. The potential for such a tragedy was not yet in the public awareness. The citizens of Pembroke built this monument to remember Josie and to forever mark the location of the tragedy. Here we are near the Pembroke Academy. On this day, October 4th in 1875, student Josie Langmaid, age 17, was on her way to school and she was brutally murdered in these woods. And this is where her body was found. As usual, you don't see this in a lot of memorials, but this one says, body found 98 feet north at Stone Hub. Head found 82 rods north. A short walk into the woods behind the monument takes you directly to one of the markers. Another side of the monument reads, Death lies on her like an untimely frost upon the sweetest flower of all the field. The monument can be found across the road from the entrance of the Three Rivers School. It remains a stark reminder that life can change in an instant.